Hello, this is Pedro Aguiar of Neo Cash Radio, and I'm here with uh, Sterling Lujan of Bitcoin.com. Uh, Sterling, good to meet you. Good to meet you too, Pedro. I'm glad to be here. Yes, sir. Thank you. Can you talk to me about what you do at Bitcoin.com? Yeah, sure, absolutely. So I'm the communications ambassador for Bitcoin.com. So my job is to travel to different conferences and venues and provide keynote presentations, do public debates, and do panels about introductory information on cryptocurrency, especially with what we're doing at Bitcoin.com. And I also do quite a bit of information on Bitcoin Cash because that's what we've been promoting as the easy to use actual Bitcoin that's a lot cheaper and has very, very fast confirmation times. Yeah, so uh, if our listeners will remember at Neo Cash, we've, we've been on the uh, Bitcoin uh, Cash bandwagon as we feel. Uh, in, our, in our personal opinion, that it's it's the true Bitcoin closest to the Satoshi white paper, uh, because w computer technology has got gone a long way in the last nine years since Bitcoin come out. I think we can handle a two megabyte block. Yeah, absolutely, and I think we can handle even higher blocks than that. I think we're looking at doing an upgrade pretty soon for 32 meg blocks, and it's not going to be any problem because anybody who's familiar with Moore's law or Ray Kurzweil talked about the law of accelerating returns, we're going to be able to keep the pace with continuing to grow the blockchain. That was the, Satoshi's vision to begin with, that we could scale these blockchains as demand grows for Bitcoin. So that's why Bitcoin Cash is more representative of Bitcoin based on the white paper. Now, what's really interesting to me and really tragic is there was an opportunity for us to actually, you know, implement SegWit early on plus scale Bitcoin, but it didn't happen like that, unfortunately. They fought tooth and nail against, then I'm talking about Core and Blockstream, they fought tooth and nail against actually expanding the block size at all, calling it Frank and SegWit. And that was a real tragedy because at that point we probably could have continued to grow together and there would might not have been as much division in the community at that point. But nonetheless, now we do have Bitcoin Cash, and I think we're going to continue into the future. We're going to grow it. And we've actually already seen via test nets that we can scale up to a, a gigabyte. You know, we've seen gigs of growth on a blockchain without any kinds of problems. Peter Risen and his team actually conducted these experiments. So that's one of the awesome things about what's going on right now. Yeah, last November and December was really tough for Bitcoin. We had a, a big increase of people wanting to uh, getting attention with Bitcoin because of how much it went up. Number of transactions went up. Not everyone was using SegWit very much because it wasn't in, in the GUI. And 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 the argument that I hear from some core supporters are, well, we want somebody in the third world to be able to uh, own a computer that can run a basic node. And my point is, well, they're going to stop running that basic node as soon as their transaction gets a good percentage of their daily income. A lot of people can't afford a $20, $30 transaction. Um, so I, I think that was a, a big learning opportunity for, for Bitcoin Core, uh, but it looks like they're still staying with SegWit and now they're pushing out Lightning. What are your thoughts on the Lightning Network? Yeah, so the thing with the Lightning Network is it's pretty much still experimental at this stage. It, very few people actually have a Lightning Network based wallet that they can actually use, just a, a handful of people in the world. So uh, if and when Lightning Network does come into existence, if it works, that's fine. I don't personally have any ill will against Bitcoin if they continue, Bitcoin Core, if they continue to expand and move forward and try to make it work. But I, I have a lot of theoretical problems with Lightning Network as well because what it looks like is we're returning back to this infrastructure type of second layer solution that uses cha a channel network that requires two entities or two people who are using it to to deposit coins in at first and then make exchanges at the rate that those coins are on the Lightning Network. Now what this can possibly allow to happen is double spin problems come back into the mix, a possible control over each of these different Lightning hubs is another issue. So theoretically I have some concerns about how Lightning Network is going to work, but even those are sort of irrelevant right now because Lightning Network hasn't come into complete existence. And if it, even Lightning Network does work well and work good, it's going to work even better on a Bitcoin Cash network that's already been expanding on the block, block size and is running without any kind of high fees right now, right here. So. I mean, if anything, increasing the, the block size moderately, many, you know, most computers out there can handle that, uh, buys a lot of time to look at more sophisticated and elegant 
uh, you know, ways to off-chain instead of trying to rush to things like, uh, I don't like SegWit because of the way it's si the signing's done. Uh, Lightning Network seems really cutting edge. I'm not sure it's ready for prime time, but you know, I hope them luck. And, and my main opinion is, you know, if you, if you really like one coin, spend your energy on building that coin up and making it better and not energy on, you know, having social media fights. That's right. So what do you see as the, um, as the biggest challenge for more acceptance of Bitcoin Cash? Is it at the retail level? Uh, yeah, that's a, definitely a good question. Well, I think we're already on a good, a good direction, a good trajectory right now with Bitcoin Cash. You know, we just had BitPay recently add Bitcoin Cash integration into their system, so that means a whole bunch of retailers automatically be started accepting Bitcoin Cash, and I think that's great. And there's actually a Bitcoin Cash initiative website where anyone can go and look at the different merchants who accept Bitcoin Cash. So I think a, a continuing education is extremely important, getting out there and letting people know that Bitcoin Cash is the real deal for commerce, and that I think will continue to push us forward. And there's something I want to mention in regards to this that's super important. We all have to remember that cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin specifically, came into existence originally as a result of the cypherpunks. The cypherpunks in the Bay Area in San Francisco, California, their initial thoughts were we need technology that gives anonymity, privacy, and freedom back to the individual. If we fall out of this idea of continuing to have digital freedom, we're just going to be run over, roughshod by governments worldwide. And that's one of the things that I, that really gets me going because governments are have a totally nasty agenda. They just want to hurt us. They want to steal our money constantly, as we've seen various times, either through the housing bubble collapse or in Greece and Cyprus, the economic collapse that happened there. So that's one of the things we need to do. We need to have digital peer-to-peer -peer cash that's usable, that's cheap, and that is readily available for commerce. If not, governments are just going to continue to try to control us and try to undermine us. So we have to do the opposite. We have to take back our freedoms, and that's what the cypherpunks originally envisioned. Absolutely. So before we wrap up, I also understand you do uh, some big, uh, blockchain type consulting. Uh, as a consultant, what do you see the biggest demand? Is it people trying to secure hardware wallets? Is it that they're just trying to get in the game at the at the base level? Yeah, actually, what what you just said, people are mainly trying to get in at the base le level. A lot of my clients are people who have no familiarity with cryptocurrency whatsoever, so they just want to understand basic things like how to start a wallet, how to trade one cryptocurrency for another, how to use cryptocurrency to buy things on an everyday basis. So most people, they don't have any initiation into the cryptocurrency space and there's so much information out there and not all the information is good information you there's a lot of fraudsters and schemers and people trying to take advantage of other people so they look to trustworthy and reliable sources of information and that's why I started my crypto consultation business so a lot of it's mainly just a lot of new people I also do an investment track for people interested in investing in some of the altcoins and a lot of the altcoins again can't be trusted because they're either fraudulent by nature or they don't really have any decent technology that underpins what they're trying to do so that's what I try to help people do who want to invest try to point them in the right direction at least and give them my opinion on what constitutes a good solid cryptocurrency and this goes into all the basics of investing you know you want to make sure the community is strong and trustworthy they have a good team you want to make sure you don't put all your eggs in one basket all the typical ideas that you have to have if you're going to invest in any kind of technology so great well thank you very much for your time sterling and uh thank you for being on neocatch radio absolutely thank you for having me Pedro. much appreciated sir. thank you yeah.